Hello, I'm Aaron Matus with D1 Ticker, here with another D1 Ticker original. The marketplace is turning to OTT content. Been really interesting to watch how that develops. And one thing that has caught our attention is happening down in Arkansas. The Arkansas Athletic Department is paired with Sport and Story to develop Hogs Plus. That is subscription-based content taking Hogs fans inside the Arkansas Athletic Department. And we are thrilled today to be joined by Arkansas Athletic Director Hunter Yerichek. Hunter, thanks for being here. How are you doing today? Aaron, we're doing great. Thanks for having us on today. First thing I want to ask you is just why and who? Why was this the time to do this? Who kind of helped you get to this point? Sure. I mean, we. I think that one of the, the whys, Aaron, is we live in a very unique state. Uh, we're the flagship institution for the state of Arkansas. There's not another Power 5 team in our state. We don't have any major professional sports teams in the footprint of our state. And we have a passionate fan base that has an insatiable appetite for the Razorbacks. And so it was, the, I think the time was right. We have a great cast of coaches who are engaged and have a great ambassadors for each of our programs. And so when Bo Mattingly and the team from Sport and Story approached us with this opportunity, it just made a great deal of sense for us to create this kind of offering of original content that we don't believe has ever been produced at this level or rate previously. Now, how did you kind of weigh that compelling, unique content you just mentioned? Uh, obviously, uh, revenue opportunity versus you know, the potential distraction being inside locker rooms, being at practices for your respective sports programs. But it's still something that's very organic and growing and their coaches are becoming accustomed, especially um, when you go inside our football locker room and our football team meeting rooms and players are being coming accustomed to it. So we're still growing. We're the only ones that know what we can do. We're the only ones. It's time to go show the world. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's go. Yeah. Um, into that. And uh, we're, we're going to continue to make changes along the way as we learn how it impacts our coaches, how it impacts our student athletes. But I think we, we live in a day and age, especially on the recruiting trails, uh, where that social media and this kind of content like we're offering now is what this generation that uh, we're recruiting is what they're looking for. It's what our fan base is recruiting. We have many fans across our state that never can come to Fayetteville and see a game in person, engage with their student athletes, engage with their coaches, engage with some of the personalities around their department. And this gives them the opportunity to do just that. Now you mentioned the coaches and I, and I imagine you had to have some conversations throughout the department. Uh, we all know you've got a self-proclaimed marketing genius in your men's basketball head coach, uh, Eric Musselman, but there's Sam Pittman, Dave Van Horn, uh, Courtney Diefel, to name a few. And I assume all of them could react differently to the idea of, you know, this all access look you're giving fans. So did you have to do some convincing? Has everyone been pretty open or did you receive a little pushback? Well, obviously, and you said it, each one of those coaches you just named has a little bit different personality. Obviously, the sales job on Eric Musselman was not very intense. I mean, this was right up his alley. Uh, Dave Van Horn's a little bit more old school, a little bit more of a conservative coach. As we head into baseball season in the locker room, probably the way we uh, interact with their baseball program may look a little different than it does for our men's basketball program. And so that's for um, our, our team with Sport and Story, um, as they go behind the scenes, they're going to learn and adapt to what the wishes are with their coaches. I mean, the cool thing about this is we um, own all of the content. We control everything as it's being edited. And if there's something that a coach doesn't like, it's not going to be rolled out there on Hogs Plus. I was going to follow up. Is that something you get, you do offer the coaches just a little chance to have some editing on their uh, on their end or, or approve of clips? There's not going to be anything that appears um, on Hogs Plus that uh, may be, let's say, edgy or something that a coach may not uh, want out there without them having the opportunity to, to view that and approve that prior to. Now, I think a lot of people might be incorrect in assuming this is all about football, uh, especially with the way Hogs Plus was able to kick off with that win over Texas. But I guess why are you so bullish on, on the idea that this is opportunistic throughout the entire department um, in terms of what you can bring fans? 
Well, I think it's again what what our fans want, they, and fans across our country they want this behind the scenes content. They want to go in the locker room. They want to go down on the sidelines. They want to hear what our coaches are saying on the sidelines. They want to have that kind of film analysis. Some of them want to flash back to uh, the we call it Razorback Rewind, where we have historic games that are now loaded on onto this. And so again, I think we live in a very special marketplace here in Fayetteville, Arkansas with a passionate fan base across the state. And this is the type of content that we heard from them that they wanted. This is the type of content that our coaches were asking for uh, to be able to sell uh, recruits on what we had to offer here at the University of Arkansas. Yeah, which is an interesting point. This certainly provides an inside look that you could show recruits as well. Um, How about personally, because you were kind of the star of that first weekend, you were mic'd up. We all heard the conversation with the police officer. We're gonna let him come down. We'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get fined for it, but no. if, we, if we don't let him come down, yeah. people, we'll get hurt. You know? I don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Just let him get the Texas guys out of here. Yeah. Let him have it. Yep. We heard the conversation or reaction, I should say, uh, with your wife and, and others on, on the sideline. <laughs> comfortable wearing the mic and kind of being candid um, with the cameras and the microphone? How much are you willing to do with these guys? Well, sure. I mean, that, that um, again, that was very organic at the start of the fourth quarter um, when it appeared that we had the game in hand, uh, the crew from Sport and Story said, hey, do you mind wearing this mic for the rest of the game? Put it on, put it in my pocket. You start watching the game. You don't think very much of it. At least I, I did not. And then, so I think the Everything happened very naturally, and I think that's what our fans want to see. That's what fans want to see. I mean, we had, I think, over a million and a half views of just kind of the teaser uh, with that clip uh, of me mic'd up. And, heck, I'm just the athletic director. I'm not Eric Musselman. I'm not Sam Pittman. I'm Dave Van Horn. But it's very compelling because I think it was just very sincere and very natural. It was not staged. It was not acted. And I think that's what I – mean, it's reality TV at its best, right? Yeah, absolutely. And forgetting your subject, forgetting they have the mic on is huge. I can tell you that from my end. Um, and wow, what a, what a way to, to launch the, the Hogs Plus idea as well. That, that couldn't have been planned better or worked out better on your end. Um, long term, how is this a win? You know, 24, 36 months out. Is it strictly subscription based? Um, or do you look at some of the deeper connections you can make with fan base, which could, of course, lead to apparel ticket sales, season ticket sales. Yeah, I, th- I think all of the above. I mean, I think the cool thing that we found out right now early on in this, that 90% of our current subscribers were not members of our Razorback Foundation. And 50% of those uh, that have our subscribers now were not in our ticket database of thousands of names and addresses anywhere. And so we're developing through this platform new fans, or at least fans that are now engaged more than they ever have been with Razorback Athletics. They're not a member of the foundation and we're not a ticket purchaser. But again, it goes back to across our state, we have people that cannot get to Fayetteville to our games, but want to be engaged with Razorback Athletics. And we've given them an opportunity to do this. Right now, this is just a video content site. Um, But what that grows in and evolves in, I think that uh, we've got a blank canvas that we can continue to paint on right now kind of extending a hand to the fan base. The footprint grows with each video you put out there. It seems like a terrific idea to us, and uh, we really appreciate you having this conversation with us. And best of luck as you continue to unfold and, and, and roll out Hogs Plus. Uh, Aaron, thank you for the time uh, today, and go Hogs. Well, we want to continue the discussion with what Arkansas is doing with Hogs Plus down in Fayetteville and this whole initiative. We're going to welcome in the Associate AD for Marketing and Brand Development, Taylor McGillis. Taylor, thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me here. Well, we first want to say, wow, you could not have planned this any better with a September 10th, I believe, launch date and then what took place on September 11th against Texas. Uh, how'd, you, how'd you put that together? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said that was the initial plan to roll out on uh, Friday, September 10th. Um, initially, we would have Ideally, like to launch that at more towards the beginning of fall camp. Um, as any project with this scope, uh, you run into obstacles, you run into roadblocks, um, technology issues. Um, so when we got into Texas week, we, we figured, hey, we need to get up and get out in front of this. Uh, we made the decision to roll out some free pieces of content um, in advance of that Texas game. 
Um, there were a couple really good pieces that were uh, already in the can, uh, one of them being about the Texas rivalry. Uh, we knew our fans would have a lot of interest in that and knew it would be lost if we waited until after the Texas game. Uh, so in um, conjunction with Sport and Story, made the decision, hey, let's get some of this content out that's already ready. Um, let's get some fans in the platform before we actually are taking subscriptions. Um, let's show them how high level and quality this content is. Um, and, and to your point with that win over Texas, our, our fan base is probably on a high. They haven't been in many, many years. So, um, in hindsight, it's the, probably the best decision we ever made launching on that Friday. Yeah. People didn't know what hogs plus was on, uh, on the Friday. They, they certainly did by either Saturday night or Sunday morning. I feel like that clip was all over social media. That probably was a welcome sight for you guys. Absolutely. I mean, when we saw that clip Sunday night after the win um, of Hunter, I think even us internally were blown away. We knew Hawks Plus was going to create some awesome organic moments, as Hunter alluded to earlier. Um, but he's right. That wasn't planned. That was that, that was knowing what was happening in the moment, saying this will be really good content. And then for us to be able to turn around that piece of content so quickly, put together an incredibly appealing uh, trailer piece uh, to put out within 24 hours of the win, uh, that became the best marketing tool we ever we ever could have imagined for Hogs Plus, and and we saw the um, the results come come pouring in quickly after we we put out that trailer. Curious if you guys maybe had a few ways you could have gone with the content you captured, uh, if you had that kind of planning, if it was going to strictly be reactionary, and uh, and I guess if so, if you had to kind of blow that plan up and just say this went so well, we got to go a whole different route. That's a good question. Probably be a better one for uh, for the sport and story folks who who saw your Radler on their team does a lot of the editing of, of everything we had from the game. There were a lot of different opportunities that we could have um, could have gone with. I know they were capturing things, you know, in our public address booth and marketing booth. Multiple people were mic'd throughout the game. Uh, ultimately, kind of the narrative of the game and what happened, the emotions afterwards, uh, ended up dictating what that what that trailer was about. But really. You go watch the full 17, 20 minute episode, whatever it was. Um, the mission, I think we accomplished it, was telling the story of that Texas game uh, beyond what fans would have seen on ESPN. And that, that kind of segues well into where I wanted to go next, um, which is, I guess, the mission, your overall content strategy. What are you shooting for across the department? And, and I guess, how much? For exclusive news and information. I think the goal is to create new fans and to further uh, strengthen the bond uh, of current fans that already exist. Um, part of what made us realize this was going to be successful was we've seen how much our fans latched on to some of our free content products that we launched with Sport and Story over the last handful of years. Um, the Hog Pod has become a top 50 podcast in all of sports, which is outrageous when you think of the, the small scope of Arkansas athletics. Um, but what that told us was when we have really high quality, compelling storytelling content, our fans are consuming it uh, at incredibly high rates. Um, so knowing that we figured, hey, why not try this from a, from a video uh, standpoint? Fans had inquired a little bit, hey, can, I, can we get more video content for this? Um, and, and Bo's team at Sport and Story, they had obviously done um, numerous other video projects with us that had aired on, on other platforms. Um, and ultimately, you know, we came to the realization, them and us, instead of pitching this to, to ESPN Plus or SEC Network, why not just do this ourselves? Our fans have shown us they have the appetite. Uh, when we have a good product on the field, our fans show up regardless of sport. When we have a good product in, the, in a storytelling narrative, um, they consume the heck out of it. So, uh, ultimately, the, the goal is to further those fan relationships. We had an example of um, someone who listened to the, the women's basketball podcast on our head coach, Mike Neighbors, uh, who had never been to a women's basketball game, uh, heard his story, heard his vision and mission for the program and said, I want to be a part of that. I love that guy. I'm buying season tickets. And he bought women's basketball season tickets because he felt a deeper bond with Coach Neighbors. Um, and that's just an example. One example we heard, there's going to be countless others. Uh, so ultimately, that's the goal with Hogs Plus, any sort of um, revenue addition uh, really is just, is just an extra bonus. Yeah, it's amazing 
what you can do when you give someone just a little extra to cheer for, which I, which I think storytelling can, can really help with. And it seems um, like what you guys are striving for here, but it does bring up the question, how do you decide what lives where? Because you still have to keep feeding the beast, which is that free content on all your social channels um, versus what's going to be behind the paid subscription uh, on Hogs Plus. Is there a give and take there? Or how do you guys divvy that out? There is, yeah, and, and it's been a, an important talking point um, for us as we explain to people what Hogs Plus is. Anything that was free previously, we're not taking away from you. We're not putting anything that was free you saw on social media um, or other podcasts behind a paywall. Um, everything is additive. Um, and those free products continue to remain incredibly important because that's our best pipeline of folks to get in who will potentially be Hogs Plus members. It's giving them you know, a free dose of daily content, whether that be our daily podcast we're doing, whether that be our daily email reader we're doing, or whether that be our weekly hog pod storytelling podcast, all those things are incredible pipelines to what uh, will be Hogs Plus content. How did you kind of come up with the overall marketing strategy and, and you know, kind of picking which part of the segmented fan base you were going to go after and ultimately settling on you know seven ninety nine a month to to start out of the gates. There was a lot of back and forth on that. Uh, we threw a lot of different price points around. Um, it goes back, back a little bit to we we have seen that our fans will support products that they feel are worthy, uh, whether that be on the field or through other means. Um, ultimately, we felt like this this content can't be found anywhere else. Uh, it's not content that you can get on ESPN Plus. It's not content. You know, occasionally you'll find something on SEC Network about the Razorbacks, but our thinking was anytime you go onto Hogs Plus, there's no scrolling around for five minutes like we all do on Netflix trying to find something that you may end up liking. We knew that fans were going to like the content on here. Um, in terms of, of how we have been marketing it since we rolled out, uh, I think one of our indications that's been, been incredibly positive and that I think we're going to have incredible room for more growth is the stat Hunter mentioned earlier of how many of the early subscribers are not people that we already knew existed, right? Um, not only is that great because we are creating or developing a bond with somebody who didn't previously have it at that level, but also now when we continue to market it over the coming months, that means that we still have a massive, massive opportunity to reach within our own means. We still have this database of people who haven't yet made that decision. So it's not like we, we said, hey, we have all these people, all the ones that are you subscribed are the ones we were able to talk to. No, we still have an incredible uh, amount of people that we need to convince rather than having to go outside of our realm to, to, to do more paid marketing. Yeah, I'm guessing that stat, I believe it was a, a major percentage were not already part of the Razorback Foundation. And it's important to note that those that do subscribe are, are given entry level access to the Razorback Foundation. Um, I'm curious, how, how did that work with Scott Verity and because you needed buy in on their end to start this and offer that as part of the package that you were offering fans. Um, and my guess is he would be thrilled to know that there's a whole lot more fans pouring in that weren't already part of the foundation. Yeah, in our research, looking at alumni association data, looking at the Razorback Foundation data, um, a lot, a lot of the Razorback Foundation members are in the state. And why is that? In my mind, I don't want to speak for them, but my mind is a lot of the benefits that you get are for coming to games and for coming for parking. Um, some of those tangible things, if you're outside of the region or live out of state, some of those things aren't as attractive to you. Uh, and maybe you haven't had the right reason to fully, fully invest uh, with a donation. We, The other piece is we really wanted this to be a membership. We didn't want it to be a subscription only. Sure. Um, ultimately, we will layer on other things beyond content. Um, and so knowing that we did not want any sort of conflicting membership program, we, we came to agreement early on, this needs to be one, they need to be uh, working in concert with one another. Um, and so came up with the concept of why not anybody who's not currently a foundation member who signs up for Hawks Plus, because if, if you look at their annual payment to us, it's going to be around 95 to $100. Uh, that is above what the entry level price is for a Razorback Foundation membership. Let's continue to get those people um, involved in other ways. And, and they'll get some of those other benefits, such as uh, early access to 
uh, bowl tickets or early access to uh, mini plan on sales, um, exclusive access to some events that we'll probably do th throughout the year. So really it, it works because it's the same mission. We reeled these people in, lured them in with the content, uh, but ultimately we want them a part of our program and, and, and continue, continue to um, deepen that relationship with them beyond the content, content scope. Numbers wise, can you share anything in terms of where you're expecting me and where you're at? I, I, I obviously the, the, the launch was terrific, but adoption success to date, uh, how are things going? Uh, adoption has blown away our expectations. Uh, I think I, I see numbers based on what we do Hogpod listenership wise. I see our website numbers. I know how supportive our fan base is. Um, one of the most supportive in the country. When you look at website traffic, app traffic, as small as our state is, we still, we still box above our weight class when it comes to a lot of our digital metrics. What I'll say is that continues to be the case here. Um, I'd say I, our expectations were, were pretty low given that we know $7.99 a month is not, is not a really, really cheap price point. Um, so it's exceeded our expectations. We're we're, we, we're going to hold that close, close to the vest right now in terms of what our um, membership numbers are. Uh, but Hog fans have been receptive, receptive to it. I can say that. Now I'll play a, a little bit of devil's advocate with that Texas game and wondering if by about Tuesday or Wednesday you say, well, shoot, how do we beat that? Uh, almost a blessing and a curse in that sense. But, uh, you know, kidding aside, how do you keep the momentum going off such a high at, at the – literal launch point and, and build on that uh, through football season or through the athletic department? I think that's one of the things um, that makes this such a perfect project for Arkansas is our fans are not just football fans. Um, basketball has the potential um, to, for us to see an absolute another explosion in growth for this platform uh, when October rolls around. Uh, we're going to have some awesome, awesome behind the scenes content of Coach Muss and our fans absolutely um, adore him. Uh, you continue in, into gymnastics. Jordan Weber, our head gymnastics coach. Um, gymnastics is, a lot of people in the industry will know this, is one of the fastest growing, especially when it comes to television consumption uh, nationally. Uh, we see this as a huge opportunity um, for gymnastics to be able to reach a wider audience than they probably have had previously and, and show future recruits what it's like to be coached by a former uh, United States Olympic gold medalist. Um, and then certainly you go into baseball and softball, uh, where we just won the SEC championships in both of those sports. Um, and our baseball fans are as fanatic as they come uh, and as loyal as they come. So we, you know, we have the expectation that, um, well, yeah, we had a great launch success with the Texas win. Um, this has the ability to continue to see spikes throughout the year. How are you going to kind of, this is the final thing I'll have for you, you know, a, a two-year goal, so to speak, and how are you going to measure success, especially given the fact that, you know, you said earlier it's, it's more about connecting with fans than it is, you know, the revenue, revenues, revenues a bonus. So what kind of metrics are you looking at? Well, um, I did say, you are right, previously that, that the content was the number one priority, and it is, um, but there is also subscription um, revenue that we have some benchmarks in place that we, uh, some goals in place that we'd like to reach over the first year, the second year, and the third year. Um, and then another component we haven't talked about is the sponsorship component to it. Um, that's another segment that, that provides our multimedia rights provider an entirely new avenue of, of content uh, where we're going to be able to say, look how loyal this audience is consuming this content. Um, so the revenue uh, Projections are probably one that we have more in place uh, in terms of what we would like to see happen over the next handful of years. Um, I'd say the, the the just broad overarching thing that is going to be a little bit more harder uh, to measure is just how much fan loyalty has increased. Uh, we always talk about bringing them one more rung up the ladder, right? If they're a single game buyer, how do you get them to come to a few more games? If they've never come to a game, you know, can you get them to care so much about someone's story? that they say, man, I, I really just need to go see them in person. Um, that'll be harder to track, uh, but we're gonna come up with some ways uh, through a cross-referencing of databases to, to figure out how many new Hogs Plus members who we didn't know previously, hey, 
after six months of content, they decided to come to a women's basketball game. That will be interesting to see. Um, and certainly we'll probably after the first six months to a year, be able to come up with some better ways to track that increase of, of fandom. Well, we think it's super interesting what you guys are doing, and, and I don't think we'll be surprised at all to see some other universities fall in line, uh, but pretty neat to be on the cutting edge, and we can't thank you enough, Taylor, for uh, being here today with us to have this conversation. Thank you, Aaron. It's fun talking about it.